It's early Christmas morning. Good morning, you guys. It is 6.40, and I'm just, just chilling in bed for a little bit before I get ready for work today. I need to go finish the video so you guys have a video for uh, today, which is your yesterday. But Shelby is just having a ball. Shelby, girl, you hungry? Here, want to eat yum-yums? I'm going to watch her. She's fixing me crazy. <laughs> Shelby Grace. Yes, my dog has a middle name. Shelby Grace. Shelby. Hungry? <laughs> Do you want to eat? Is you a hungry girl? My, what a big nose you have. Oh my goodness. Scratch. Hey, eat. <laughs> she just gave you guys a kiss. You want to eat? Okay, we'll back up. Back up. Sit. Thank you. Want to go eat? Want yum yums? Is it time for breakfast? Huh? The mom's got to get in the shower. Hey guys. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was literally the only clip I got yesterday. I um, went to work and then I decluttered some at work. Uh, it was just two of us in the office and it's easier to go in and dig through and clean out things when it's just us. So I got that done. It was nice. It was something I like to do um, for the end of the year so that in January we start with a, a fresh spruced up office. I'm in my room so you guys are going to listen to the fan. Um, and then I decorated for Christmas so that's nice because that's all done. So compared to last year, last year I was not in the Christmas mood and Christmas spirit at all. I'm going to turn this fan off. It's kind of annoying much better I was not in the Christmas spirit at all last year and I think it took me almost to the middle of December to finish decorating at home and in the office and it's kind of sad really kind of sad it's nice to be in the mood this year and it's so funny because honestly um, with Joel working uh, being furloughed every other week we're good financially it's just we don't have the extra cushion that we're used to playing with this time of year so gift wise we're gonna go very light this year I think everybody is I don't know anyone who is gonna go out beyond their normal um, 2020 has just taught us some things are more than just gifts and we have a lot to celebrate um, we have a lot to celebrate. I cannot wait to reflect back on this year with you guys in a week or two as we prepare for 2021. Um, this morning is Saturday, obviously. You guys are going to see all this on Sunday. I am um, going to go through the advent of kindness. I did not share yesterday and course I'm gonna show you today I'm gonna catch you guys up in the community tab so if you already saw that I am gonna also add it down below in the description box and that's that today I am going to I have one more module left to study and then I'm gonna take my certification exam I hope to pass it the first time you get three tries then you have to wait 60 days but I'm pretty confident um it should hopefully go okay. I don't want to toot my own horn at all. So there's many that are now having to wait 60 days out of our group. And I don't want that. But I'll just try my best. So I'm either going to do, I think I'm going to do the last module today. And then tomorrow on Sunday morning I will take my exam. It's like a three hour test. So I'll just kind of set that time aside. So maybe, yes, I'm going to do it either this evening or, my arm's getting tired. <laughs> um, I'm going to do it either this evening or tomorrow, probably tomorrow. Let's look at this advent. We need to find day four and day five. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Oop, I saw day four right away. Looks like a nice glass of lemonade, which I'm going to have some lemonade here in a little bit. Um, let's pull this back, see what it says. 
In 2014, a seven-year-old boy in Maple Ridge, Canada, put up a lemonade stand trying to raise $20,000 for a surgery that would help his best friend walk without pain. His efforts inspired a lot of people. And the Lemonade Stand, together with an online campaign, ended up raising $61,000. Upon hearing the story, the doctor performing the surgery waived the fees, and the money was instead donated to cover another child's operation. Mission number seven, hospital visits are never fun, especially not for kids. So why not send over some coloring books and crayons to your local hospital? I love this idea, especially right now, because um, I know here in the Houston area, our hospitals have now gone back to no visitors. Um, and we have Texas Children's, which is one of the largest Texas uh, children's hospitals in the state. I'm not sure about the country, but I know that they also deal with a lot of cancer children. And so that is something that is definitely worth doing. But I have a friend who works in the medical center and I also have a neighbor whose child is a patient at Texas Children's. Um, they do a lot of outpatient. So I am going to work on that this week for sure and gather some stuff and see if she'll just take it with her um that way there's let there's no contact you know there's less contact with other people and you kind of keep everybody safe so i highly suggest that you guys coloring books puzzles um play-doh i don't know about play-doh though right now honestly because it is a germ magnet uh, mission number eight, learn how to say hello and or thank you in some of the languages that are spoken in your community. Check the box when you've used your new found language skills at least once. Fun. So that was day four. And now we are going to try to find day five. You guys, I am loving this calendar. I really am. And I want to... Hold on. Oh, that's why <laughs> it comes from the other way. I kind of can guess what it is. Can you guess what it is? My daughter is really good at this. I don't need your blood. I bet you. Okay, I hope I'm not making y'all sick. <laughs> Giving blood is a safe, simple, and quick way to make a big difference in people's lives. The process usually takes about an hour, and you will donate about one pint which is 50 milliliters of blood. This is roughly 10% of your total blood volume and is enough to save lives of up to three people. And don't worry, your clever body will immediately start making new blood for you until you have a full tank again. Mission number nine, book an appointment to donate blood in the near future. If you're not eligible to donate, share information about blood donation to inspire your friends and family instead. And mission number 10, send a thank you card or text message to a former teacher that you really appreciated. Aww. I think I am definitely going to do mission 10 and mission 9. Um, I'm going to tell you all a story about my daughter and the first time she donated blood. She was in high school. She was a senior in high school, and they were doing a blood donation in the spring. She was 17. She was eligible to donate on her own, and so she wanted, that was something her heart really wanted to do. So she donated blood, and they get your contact information. And so she gave them her, um, her cell phone number, and we were in the living room, one day after school and she got a text and then she started crying and I was worried um, at that time in that season of of time our community had gone through a widespread um, and I say widespread a widespread season of teen suicides um, there was probably one maybe two a year the first couple years we got here um, so when, and then she had some friends who had passed away that year from, they had gone dove hunting and their boat capsized and 
they drowned and it was very very sad so she when she gets the text and she's crying I'm thinking oh gosh what happened there now you know what else are we going to face here this year and she had gotten a text letting her know that her blood donation just saved the lives of two people and she teared up and from that time she's been committed ever since <laughs> I'm so pleased you guys <clears throat> Hold on. As a parent, <clears throat> it's very touching watching your adult children, and I consider them all adults. They're 18 and up. Um, the twins are 18, and our daughter's 21. So, watching your adult children make decisions that are life changing, not only for themselves, but as a blessing to other people. And I have, we have raised some of the greatest kids I've ever known. <laughs> I'm very humbled, humbled, humbled <laughs> by their existence in this world. They teach me all the time, all the time. And I know that had, had I been with another person and not my husband, or had we not been in church, the times that we've been in church and <clears throat> Ray understood the depth of parenting and the, the long lasting effects of what we teach our children, they probably would not be as amazing as they are. Are they perfect? No. Are any of us perfect? No. But they're pretty darn close. <laughs> They are pretty darn close. I'm very pleased with them. I have the best kids in the world, and I'm excited for their futures, and ours is a family. We've shifted for sure. We've shifted for sure um, into pre-empty nesters, and it's a good feeling. It's a very good feeling. That is one thing I do plan on celebrating um, with you guys in the next couple weeks. For now, I'm going to go get that done on my, my, that last module. I think there's, I think in it was six lessons. So there's probably, it will have four lessons and then a review and a summary. So I'm trying to think how they're broke up, but oh, let's get this done. Today's a good day. Today's a good day. It is 11 o'clock. I'm home for the rest of the day. Um, the last twin who will be taking his road test next week got to drive. We went to drive around and then I let him have control. He got to drive where he wanted to. We went to H-E-B and we came home. And now it's college football time and it's time to work on that and it's time just to enjoy my family and I got a buttload of laundry to do so honestly you guys I'm gonna wrap this video up here um, it's a little longer than I thought it was gonna be so I'm gonna go ahead and get this uploaded and posted today so happy Saturday to you guys I'm in your real time and maybe I'll start a new vlog for tomorrow you may not see me until Monday though um, because it's very important for me to take this test and to push forward in in this adventure. And so trying to find balance between home and work and adding that in. And I really miss writing, but I had to put it on the back burner. For now, it has been three weeks since I started this adventure, I think. <sighs> I think it's been three weeks. I took a little time off last week. Oh, and I want to do some diamond painting today. That is what I am going to do. I'm going to go do that module and then get this uploaded and posted. You guys, good evening. I hope you're having a great Saturday evening. And I'm going to diamond paint some because I want to see this gnome because he tends, he is just going to fit in my decor really well if I could get him finished and framed. I'm just loving the Christmas gnomes. And I used to think they were creepy. I remember on King of the Hill. <laughs> yes, I love that cartoon. On King of the Hill. Remember Peggy had a gnome. Was it a lucky gnome that she got? And someone stole it out of her yard. I don't 
don't remember. I'm gonna have to go find the episode and watch it. If I can find it on YouTube, I'll link the link down below <laughs> or maybe up in the cards um, so you guys can see <clears throat> because I don't know. We all need to laugh every now and then. <laughs> I will see you guys in the next video. Rolls out of bed. He rubs his tired eyes and lifts his weary head. He knows the day before him from so many times before. It's what he loves the most and will do forevermore.